media interviews on climate change can be a tricky area because it's not only a very broad and complex area of science, but it's one which evokes strong emotions and can be highly political. But there are steps that you can take to make interviews on this subject easier to handle. Because climate change is such a broad topic, it's always a good idea to try to find out what aspect of it you're likely to be asked about in an interview. Sometimes the questions will be made up by journalists off the cuff, but any information that allows you to prepare beforehand is helpful. This gives you time to research answers if needed, consider how to best explain complex issues, and focus on the key points that you want to get across in an interview. When looking for information on climate change, the IPCC is the global authority on the subject. Their latest assessment report, known as AR5, was written by hundreds of leading scientists around the world, and the synthesis report is a helpful summary of AR5, which you can view and download online. It's also important to stick to the science when you're doing interviews, and don't get dragged into some of the tricky areas around policy or politics, which aren't part of your remit as a weather or climate representative. The science should speak for itself. Remember that people come to you to interview you because you are the experts, so you can guide the interview to the right areas and focus on the important points. We're now going to hand over to Peter Stott, a senior climate scientist here, who has a lot of media experience, has done numerous interviews in the past. Well, I think the things that I think about when I'm thinking about talking to the media is, is first of all, starting with what we know. And of course, we have a, a very strong basis in terms of uh, our observations of changing climate and indeed in terms of our basic understanding about the greenhouse effect which we've known for a very long time and that of course has very clear implications for for example extreme weather and the, the increasing risks for example of heat waves and, and floods under, under extreme um, under climate change in future. So, so you can start with with what we know and what we understand remembering of course it's not just your individual research or your individual institute that's, that's doing this. It's, it's the result of a whole body of scientists from all around the world who have this very strong um, scientific uh, consensus and understanding about, about these facts. And then you can go on to the, to the ongoing research. And of course, there is uh, important scientific uncertainties um, that we need to get across. But I think those need to come in the context of the basic knowledge that, that we have. I think sometimes you can feel on the back foot. I don't think it's necessarily the most common occurrence, but sometimes, for example, questions can be posed very negatively. Um, for example, I've been involved in interviews about the, the IPCC report, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, when it came out. And for us as scientists, this was, this was clearly a very, uh, from a scientific perspective, a very important piece of news and a very positive piece of news in the sense that we had new information, and important new information about why climate was changing and what would happen in future. Um, whereas the questions to me were posed in a very negative way about you know, the IPCC being, being just a, a political stitch up or we knew less than we did. So I think the key thing there is to be very clear about what you want to say and to put it in a positive way. You know, the IPCC is an extraordinarily scientific process and in fact it's evidence from the last 15 years that mean that we're more confident about climate change than we were. So don't respond defensively and negatively but just come out really strongly with your positive messages from from your research. Ultimately, interviews are an opportunity for you to inform and engage people on important issues, so do use those interviews. Climate science, as we've said, is a very broad subject, but there are issues that come up time and time again in our experience here. So these are often in relation to current weather. So people often confuse regional weather with global climate change. For example, here in the UK, when we have a spell of unusually cold weather, we're often asked, how is this possible with global warming? So it's important to be able to explain the difference between weather and climate and between short-term natural variability compared to the long-term signal for warming. After extreme weather events, the media also often want to ask whether this is because or due to climate change. So you have to be clear about what your answer might be about those kind of questions in advance. Use the existing science from the IPCC or attribution statements, but don't be drawn into making statements that you can't back up with science. 